Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video we are going to talk about the best 7 inch handheld you can get. Let's see this more like in the recap for the people who are just new to the channel or just seeing this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell and give this video a thumb up. We're going to talk about 7 inch of fun because we have a lot of stuff to talk about and so let's begin with number one and let's see what are we going to get with these devices from China. All right, so for the number one, we are going to take a close look at this version. This is the X16, a Chinese portable device. And this is the brand Pau Kitty. And there's a reason I'm always saying it because it's just a wicked name. And I love Pau Kitty brand because they got a lot of great stuff. But basically what they're doing is just relabeling a product. In this case, it's Pau Kitty, but we're having different brands. So let's do, be, let's do one quick wrap up with this device. What you can see over here, there are basically a couple of versions out there. There are some different software versions, but it's just a poor emulation device. It must say it has some very neat features. For example, you can quick load, quick save. You can add your own games through the TF card over here. But what's a little bit of a downside with this thing is that as you can see already, the view angle is pretty damn poor. And what is the problem with this software after, let's say, two years, it's still pretty damn horrible because the emulation is pretty poor, sound issues and even a lot of glitch stuff. So the X16, it's in Chinese. It's not a very cheap device. It goes around $50. Um, I really love the 7 inches devices, but this thing, if it comes to the software, it's pretty poor. Nevertheless, check out the full review, but the Pau Kitty is pretty memorable, but it is not the best one out there. I'll give you a small example how choppy it is. It goes quite loud. The D-pad, it's playable, but I hate it. The analog stick is very poor. Missing out sound effects, hearing slowdowns. This is not the experience that you want to have with a game like this. So now we're having this Van Zetic tablet. I did a review quite some time ago, and this was the one of the first 7 inch Android devices I got. But this thing suffers from quite some big problems. First of all, this thing hasn't quite a big amount of RAM, and you can you can just see it when navigating, for example. The problem with this device also is that it has a poor battery life and after using it for some time it was not working properly anymore. Alright, so the next one was the Vanzetic. It was a 7 inch Android based, let's say, combination of a tablet and a handheld. I really love the idea behind it because Android gives us so much, let's say, better options. But the problem with this device was that this is a very old Android version. The controls are pretty poor. You can already hear it. We're having this very horrible D-pad. So it is a little bit of a shame that you're going to get this. The screen itself was not the best. But at the end, what you're going to get is a very slow device. And as you can see, it doesn't even respond anymore. Oh my, unlocking it from the screen itself. So then we had the Polaroid. It's already freezing. I think I need to reset it or something like that, but can we reset it from here or something? Nope. I can reset it from here. Nope. Can I reset it here? Yes, I can. Nevertheless, what you're going to get is more and better, let's say a slightly better device than the Vanzetic. The idea behind it is exactly the same. The D-pad is way better than this model. In the meantime, I'm going to boot it up in hope that I can still show you something. But what it was, was a combination of, um, let's say, an tablet and a controller like the previous model and this thing had a little bit of a faster let's say clock speed everything was a little bit better including a newer android version but still it's pretty damn dinosauric all because at the end you couldn't even download the newest games from the store beside that it had this little stickery rubber on the casing it's also a very poor design choice if you ask me but it felt very stable and very good if it comes to the quality compared, for example, with the X16 over there. Android gives us the freedom to add whatever we want. If you want to install, let's say, an emulator, you can just add it yourself and you can basically play some games. 
It worked a little bit better than the Vanzetic and Eden had a kind of a naughty store where you can basically add, drag and drop your games and play some retro stuff. So it's pretty cool. We also had games like Fruit Ninja. So still, the Polaroid is very hard to find. Maybe you can find it on Amazon, eBay, uh, maybe in a lost store somewhere. But if you can find it, you can pick it up. I think it's a pretty fun device. As you can see, it did froze the first time, but it works fine now. Alright, so last year they released this bad boy. It was the... Can I say it? Do I remember it? Yes, it was the Pow Katie. But nevertheless, it was the X19. Yes, so it was more like the updated version of this one. Nowadays they're ripping off Nintendo Switch colors because they just want to mimic it. But what you're going to get basically is the same shitty software. Yes, seriously. They are just basically redesigning the system itself and giving you the exactly same software. They didn't even put the extra effort for giving you better joysticks. They're just giving you exactly the same software. And what is a little bit of a downside with the X9, for example, is that you don't have the back, bu back button. So this means they mapped it to the left trigger. I don't know how it's with you, which when you're playing GBA or other devices, or for example, you want to have an arcade game that needed six buttons. Normally we're using, let's say for Street Fighter, the high punch and high kick, for example, with the shoulder button. But that is not possible because they messed it up and use the back button over here same one you same shitty seven inch display as you can see the poor oh, very horrible poor view angle the emulation same story like i showed you before is that with the arcade games they are run pretty damn awful and that is not the experience they want still it's a funny device that you can play your old retro games but still this is what you're going to get is basically more like a beefcake x16 a funny thing is with the Chinese, they can't help themselves or something because Cool Baby, Cool Baby, released a new device last year. This is the Eris 9, if I'm recalling it correctly. So, again, we're having seven inches of fun, people. Yes. And no, we don't have stereo speakers. We have all mono speakers because the cheapos don't want to give us two speakers. There are basically two holes, but you can't. Maybe you can add a new one yourself, but this is what you're going to get. I really hate when they're doing it. Yeah, and here it comes. The design itself, to be honest, it's very well. It lays very well in your hand. It plays good. Shitty analog stick. The D-pad, they're still doing this with the four buttons. I don't understand why they're not using a very good D-pad like with the Polaroid version. And here we have the AB. Touch is really nice. Shoulder buttons. Okay, powering it on. And what you're going to get is basically the same software. As you can see, it even has the same Tekken ripoff intro. What do you see? Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tekken 6. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't run Tekken 6. That's Bulox. The menu looks a little bit different. Uh, they did change some things out in a couple of years. Uh, but at the end, when you're going into the game menu, you still have the same software. By the way, this thing struggles from something new, some new problem. Is that, as you can see, is in the Asian language. And you can change it out, but somehow it doesn't save your lost, let's say, language settings. And every time you reboot it, it goes back to the Asian language. I did a full review about this thing. But as you can see, compared with the X19, the X16 over there, it still, it still has the shitty software and this means also the shitty emulation all right so what are we going to get now we having a new call baby or basically just a rebranded handheld from china so what you're going to get with this device is eight gigabytes there's also a funny thing that i need to point out some have eight gigs some have 60 big some just add an sd card nevertheless we all getting the same stuff mono speaker 7 inch display that is pretty damn horrible. Okay, so I purchased this version from AliExpress and the reason why I wanted to see it for myself. I wanted to have this thing in the collection. I wanted to do this in a video. I want to go maximum 7 inch of fun with the GXD and just want to see what we're going to get because this thing is around 200 euro. Maybe you can find it a little bit cheaper on eBay nowadays, but then there's the question, is this worth money? So first of all, what I noticed with the GXD product, if you find an original one, these things weigh a ton compared with these flimsy cheap devices. This is a very thick battery inside. It also has way better quality. We're having all the shoulder buttons that we're going to need for, for example, if you want to play PlayStation emulation whatsoever, the D-pad is like it should be, it plays nice. A, B, X, Y, everything is here, or sorry, A, B, C, D, C, D. 
we're having here all the buttons because this thing runs on Android. And that is something that is pretty damn awesome. I love the Android devices. Not already going to say it, but the problem with all of the GXD and all the brands is that they're not making them anymore. And they are quite old. And here comes the biggest problem that we're having all of these old Android versions. And that is such a big bummer because if you have, let's say, an Android 7 on this device, it can run on this hardware. You can install newer apps and you can basically get better potential. But as you can see already here, it says Android 4.4. And that is such a big bummer. We can still emulate a lot of stuff up to PlayStation 1. There will not be a big problem. Don't forget to check out the full review because this thing is quite interesting to see. And it has a very nice... I'm not going to say IPS because it's not IPS, but as you can see, this thing is in way different quality range. And of course we have a touchscreen, also very easy to use, very convenient. It doesn't go very loud. It has stereo speakers somewhere. Uh, it was inside the casing. So that is something that I really love about it. I have no clue what he's go what he's doing. Ah. But of course, you can see it struggles a little bit even with Zen Pinball. But it is cool that you can play it like this. And that's of course only possible with an Android based device. So I think if you're searching for, let's say, an, you're not looking at the price and you want to have a decent product quality, GXD, if you can find maybe something for 50 euro, if you find this thing for 50 euro, it's worth the money. Absolutely. But again, you're very limited due of the old Android version. All right, so the favorite handheld that I'm having if it comes to seven inch. Basically, there are the, let's say the Wikipad and the Big Band, the Fusion or the two-in-one devices that we have in this tablet they can use for playing your Android games and we can basically add your own apps and emulate old stuff. So that is pretty cool. The only downside that I'm having with these systems is they are very old and the Android version are also dinosauric old. So what you're basically going to get yeah, you're going to get some awesome devices. You can install some older apps up to, let's say, PlayStation 1. Even if it has a MediaTek or an NVIDIA Tegra version, they are not very powerful. And that is something that you really need to live with. At the end, it's very fun to play. You can, for example, play Android games. And that is one of the reasons why I really love these devices. It works very well and this beefcake controller also <laughs> it works fine but it's really clunky so if you're having small hands it will not be very comfortable to play so and this is one of the reasons why i love these two-in-one devices so at the end if you're looking at all the versions i've reviewed for example with the x16 if you can find one of these, for example, the Android devices for let's say $50 or something around that, that is really worth the money because you can basically play Android games still nowadays and you emulate retro games. With these Chinese devices, I think this is one of the best version because of the layout and everything, but still it's very limited and you're having this shitty software. So there you have it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. This was more like a recap. Don't forget to subscribe channel, hit the little bell and Give this video a thumb up. And I'm going to play some zombies. Or better said, I'm going to shoot some zombies. Defend yourself! Looks pretty nice.